Hi, I'm Ludic Ryan. Today I'd like to talk about tense level design in an indie game called Jotun. Jotun is the debut title from Thunder Lotus Games, which first released in 2015, but has recently been re-released on Nintendo Switch. The game centres on Thora, who died an inglorious death and must earn her way into Valhalla by defeating the Jotun, who are giant elementals of nature. Thora travels the realms, defeating enemies and collecting runes so that she can face off against the Jotun. There is one level in particular, however, that concerns us here. This is the level on the frozen lake with Jormungandr. I look at how this level builds tension through perspective, sound and animation. Then I'll show how this complements the ludic elements throughout movement momentum and the invulnerability of the antagonist. What's exciting about this level is that it captures a rare feeling within games that is explored in few others, of the player being hunted. In the game, the player explores different realms in pursuit of the Jotun, giant elementals in need of a good vanquishing. Players must first find them by collecting runes in other levels, which will lead to an encounter with these bosses. Perspective on the player character is viewed from a top-down isometric viewpoint, as in Transistor and in Bastion. Thora can run, dodge roll, use light and heavy attacks, and activate an array of magical abilities. The level in question takes place on an icy lake within which a rune is hidden. The problem is that the frozen lake is home to the world serpent, Jormungandr. To progress, the player must cross the lake and find the rune in the centre, whilst avoiding the attacks of Jormungandr. Jotun is framed by the perspective of Thora. She explains the myth and significance of each level through narration. Through this narration, she weaves a tapestry of epic deeds and mighty gods, into which it is difficult to place the endeavours of mortals. This framing of Thora as facing almost insurmountable odds within this game world is multiplied by the continual shifts in perspective. The camera position will often zoom out to show the vast landscapes or the gargantuan scale of enemies. Both the narration and the scaling of the camera serve to frame Thora in relative insignificance to the world around her. This disparity in scale between Thora and the world is used to great effect when she steps out onto the ice and the shadow of Jormungandr can be seen swimming beneath. It's an unsettling combination of the unknown and the imposing scale of the serpent. The sheer size of Jormungandr is shown further with the juxtaposition between the shadows of the fish swimming around and the shadow of the serpent as it crosses the screen. Finally, the music, or lack thereof, must be looked at. There is no sweeping score that accompanies Thora's movements across the ice, only a slow, pulsating violin track with a resonating drumbeat. As we can hear, this rhythmic pulse suggests the heartbeat of Jormungandr itself as it tracks the player around the lake. These representational elements all combine to construct a level in which the player feels hunted and insignificant, and the ludic elements build upon this feeling. The space of this level is simply laid out. The lake is oval in shape, with the objective placed just above the centre. The player enters from the southwest portion of the map and must traverse across to get the rune. The sheer scale of this open expanse is combined with the camera positions to emphasise the gargantuan scale of Jormungandr. Periodically, the serpent will attack from beneath the ice, doing damage, throwing Thora backwards, and putting the player off course of their goal. Interestingly, the shadow of Jormungandr is used as a form of ludic anticipation. As it scrolls horizontally, the serpent is tracking the player, getting ready for an attack. When the serpent appears as a circle, it indicates an imminent attack. Because the player is being attacked by the Great Serpent, reliable movement is ideal for the player. This is not quite provided for, however. Movement on the ice operates as expected, with forward momentum carrying the player beyond where they might intend, leaving them easier prey for Jormungandr. Throughout most of the space, the player is continually hunted, however there exists safe space to the west and north. Cliff edges looking out on beautiful vistas await the player. There is no danger from Jormungandr here, and the heartbeat violins fade away. The perspective shifts from the leg entirely, away from being tracked by the serpent, creating a serene space. There are interesting pieces of design here that formulate a tense experience. In addition to the representational elements, this level strips the player of absolute control over their movement, which is crucial here. It operates similarly to The Flame and the Flood by Molasses Flood, who embedded tension in these river sequences by altering the flow and speed of the river. It's an untamable beast that you exert only minimal control over. A 
Allowing the player to act and have a slim chance of winning whilst making them feel powerless is how some developers create tension in their games. In this window, Dan Marshall used three pieces of design to create a tense experience. Player insta-kill, character permadeath, and a time limit. These three combine to deliver a tense, roguelite experience. Alien Isolation achieves intensity with an invulnerable enemy, which limits the player's options for dealing with it. Ludic intensity can be designed through constraining the player's ability to act in the face of compelling narrative frames, like the hunt. Now, Yotun doesn't use permadeath, insta-kill or a time limit, but it does take away the player's movement agency and confronts them with an invulnerable foe. It creates the feeling that the player is being hunted, and this can be rare in games. Of course in the horror genre we have things like Nemesis from Resident Evil 3, the Silent Hill games, and more recently Alien Isolation. But Prince of Persia Warrior Within also fosters this feeling of points during the chase sequences with the Tahaka. Hunt and chase sequences are exciting set pieces in games that disrupt the flow and place a player on edge. This level in Jotun does just that. It takes an isometric action game with skill based movement and combat and turns it on its head to deliver one of the most tense levels in recent years. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to check out my last video, which is about colonialism and Splatoon, you can click on the link in the video. And if you'd like to be notified when my next video drops, then click on the subscribe button.